Support for Elwood City Limits is brought to you by Facebook. Facebook.com slash Elwood City Limits. Twitter. At ECL Podcast. Tumblr. ElwoodCityLimits.tumblr.com. Instagram. At Elwood City Limits. And through email. ElwoodCityLimits at gmail.com. And from listeners like you. Thank you. Okay, Lucas, no fooling around. You're 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 gonna be steering the ship here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get things off. I don't think we've ever really gotten to the chase this quickly. So this is uh, Elwood City Limits, the episodic Arthur podcast. My name is Will Young, and throwing it now to uh, my co-host Lucas Mancini. Lucas, what's going on? I Captain, I be I Irish, I be the, I'm the captain now. I'm steering the ship. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's all me. Uh, that's right. As promised, if you're a person in the Discord, or if you've been keeping up with us for the past few weeks, uh, we have a special guest today mm. on this episode. Um, oh, I, I, I think they're here right now. I'm listening. I think... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners of Elwood City Limits, we're welcoming to the podcast... For the first time, Alex Moore. <laughs> What's going on, Elwood City Limits listeners? What's going on? What's popping, y'all? It's going down right now on the pod. It's going down on the pod. <laughs> that was my intro. That's all I had planned for it. But uh, <laughs> that's it. Okay. What's Lucas, going I'm, on? Lucas, I'm glad that you you left that as a surprise for me. That was uh, uh, I was so curious as to where it could be going, and I. I love it. So, um, yes, uh, we do have a special guest today. Uh, Lucas, I will fire it back to you there because this is a uh, a close personal friend of yours, and I think that you would be uh, very suited to let our audience know before we throw it over to our guest and introduce themselves. Yeah, uh, my my good friend Alex Moore, a.k.a. Maximilius Mood, a.k.a. <laughs> severely online, uh, I would say... Uh, famous for uh, being in a couple local bands, but mostly famous for having <laughs> the best Twitter account in Dartmouth, IMO. Uh, maybe not the best, is... maybe not the best Twitter account in HRM, but definitely the best Dartmouth Nova Scotia in Dartmouth. Twitter account. I will gladly accept that <laughs> title, <laughs> and that's coming from the Dartmouth uh, Daimyo himself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm a big fan of that new uh, that new Twitter handle, Lucas. Thank by the you, way, thank you. I was sad to uh, <laughs> retire Halifax Hokage, but I think uh, Dartmouth <laughs> Daimyo is a suitable replacement. It's a, it's yeah, it's a, it's more accurate. You know. So, Alex, welcome to the show. Very happy to have you here on Elwood City Limits. Now, I, as always, like to ask our guests, what's your history uh, with Arthur? Was it something that you watched when you were younger? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched a lot of it when I was younger. Um, probably one of the shows I watched the most uh, as a kid, I would say. And uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I've revisited like a, a handful of episodes uh, recently and a lot of the jokes still hold up. I still think it's funny. I still think it's a really good show. Y yes, absolutely. And th now this was one, Lucas, uh, he was asking... This this was about a month or two ago. He's like, "Are there any musical episode like music ep episodes coming up?" And I was like, "Actually, yeah, there is this one, and it's a Binky episode." And he's like, "Great! I think my friend would actually be really great to have on for this one." So, can you tell us a little bit about your uh, music project? What type of music do you play? Uh, I've got uh, a couple that I'm involved with right now. Um, I guess the one that kind of. Uh, I don't want to say it's like the main focus because I put a lot of work into all of them, but the one that kind of seems to uh, have done the most, I guess, is called Frail Hands, where a uh, uh, screamo band, I guess, uh, kind of like a melodic, but still in the vein of hardcore punk mm -hmm. i guess yeah i i heard you guys on, and, and, on... and nothing's sorry will nothing's yeah, yeah. more hardcore punk than binky barnes 
You know what I mean? Oh yeah, no. Like, uh, uh, if I if I was gonna say like who is the most punk Arthur character, it sure as hell ain't Muffy, and it definitely isn't Mister <laughs> Rapper. Uh, it's 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 Binky, Effin Barnes is is punk Bin- as, as hell. Binky. Binky and like all of his friends all like kind of dress like <laughs> hardcore kids in 2019 do, which is crazy. But it's so funny to me because like I'm like watching these episodes, I'm like these people just like look like people I would see at shows. <laughs> and then, uh, I, now, and now more. I, I also I wanted to ask. Uh, you have a lot of experience in watching Arthur as a kid, um, and of course, uh, you know you have some musical expertise. But I also just wanted to touch briefly on. Um, I, I would, I don't know if you'd consider yourself this, but I would consider you a, somewhat of an amateur meme expert. Uh, and, uh, I, I'm a bit of a historian. A meme historian, yeah. that's right, because in meme time, one day is essentially a decade. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, Arthur memes, all the rage. Uh, what, what is your take, um, you have a fondness for the show from, uh, as a, as a child, but what about... How do you feel about the memes? Some of the memes are really good, but I've seen some like really, really bad ones as well. <laughs> <laughs> There's some that I've like looked at. And I'm like, I'm like, man, this this is just a bad. What, joke. what, <laughs> what makes but, an Arthur meme good or bad? I guess is ooh, is is, yeah, a, good, is a good question this. for you. Well, I I think it's it's kind of just a uh, my, my my personal taste and humor. Like uh, a lot of the ones where. Th- the base of the meme is uh, like uh, the picture of Arthur's clenched fist from the episode where I don't know the actual name of it. The one where he he uh, he punches D.W. Mm-hmm. in the episode. Those memes are all really good. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I've seen some just like random like one off ones, like not like uh, like a meme that like wasn't a part of like a big like it wasn't like a big meme where it was like everyone's posting this one thing but like one person i follow on twitter might just like throw one up and i've been like oh this one kind of sucks <laughs> it's really just down to my own my own uh so to hear what right. i find funny and hey careful because i mean i mean who who am i to say what is funny hey, hey is careful funny? there one of one of those bad memes might be from the elwood city limits twitter account <laughs> most you know what most <laughs> no sure. ac- actually they can't all be winners actually I'm I'm a follower of the Elwood City Limits Instagram account, and I'm a fan of the posts. Thank you, there. thank you very much. So, I I do like the I do like. Thank those you very posts. much. I appreciate that. Like I say, they can't all be winners, and sometimes like I'll like I'll look at a cl- I'll look at a screen cap that I did a week ago, and I'm just like oh, I gotta get rid of this one, and then just bang. Oh, I'm. Out. I'm a hundred percent guilty of of making some objectively awful <laughs> posts <laughs> myself. Like I'll post something, and I'm like I'm like. This is gonna, this is so funny. This is gonna go over so well. Everyone's gonna think this is funny, and no one thinks it's funny. <laughs> and I'm just like, uh, I can delete this and be a coward, or I can just leave it <laughs> and up, the, <laughs> and I can accept accept my. And then failure. some, of, and then the weird one is that some of the ones you put the least effort into get the most traction. Yeah, yeah. I and I think I, and I think I say that as well as someone who just identifies as incredibly old and behind the times. So now, just... Will, Will, I think you're selling yourself short because I'm looking at the Elwood City Limits Twitter account right now, and there's a picture of Pal dancing with a piece of bacon, and it says Sausage Party 2016. And I think that's like a really, 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 really funny post. Thank you. That is Thank really you. good. That one was really that was, good. I, the, it's, when we were watching that episode the first time before we even recorded, I was like, that's what that joke is. So sometimes, sometimes I have those in the can ready to go and some of them are just like i uh, i don't i don't know topical humor <laughs> uh well alex very glad to have you here and i'll yes i'll be kind of looking for some of your uh your expertise in these various areas as we go through this episode of arthur it's always good we always like to bring in like a a different perspective to things and i think uh, you definitely fit the bill here so happy to have you we're actually we're actually going to forego our email segment this week we do have a couple of them that are in the can and we will get to them on the next episode just in the interest of time i want to get down right to the meat of this episode alex was this the first full arthur episode you've watched in like years at this point um i wouldn't say years but 
I remember watching a couple episodes not too long ago, maybe a couple months mm-hmm. ago. I uh, I just watched like, a couple of random episodes on YouTube. Like I just looked up Arthur full episodes or something. They are very stuff. readily available, and so that's that's a, yeah. a huge boon I think to anybody, especially anybody who's listening to our podcast, is that you can literally just go on YouTube, watch the episode, and then come back and listen to us, or just uh, decide for yourself. And that's a, a, a really good thing for. Th- uh, how scattered the Arthur community is across all social media platforms. Uh, so this episode that we have here, we have Muffy's Soccer Shocker, and then the one where I th- where I think your expertise is going to be a uh, a big advantage is uh, Brother, can you spare clarinet? <laughs> I hope. I hope. And it I, is. And, and I mean, not to get ahead of ourselves or anything, but I feel like we have another we have another Binky fan, another Binky Stan here in the conclave. <laughs> Definitely, definitely a Binky stand. Yeah. Right At any here. point during Binky's hijinks, not to get ahead of ourselves, uh, did you say "Yes, go off, King"? <laughs> oh, definitely, big time, <laughs> <laughs> big time. I'm rooting for Binky. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually been. Uh, I ho- if if there's one thing I hope would be the legacy of this show, it's the reconsideration of Binky Barnes as an all time character of fiction. Not just not children's television, not television, not animation, but the medium of storytelling itself. Yeah. I'm Let's start it off here with Muffy's Soccer Shocker. This one uh, immediately kind of gave me flashbacks to childhood. Every I feel like we go through all of these Arthur episodes. We're into the sixth season now, and I, th- I keep thinking that I've mined all, every single one of my childhood memories. But then one comes along like this. It's Arthur and the gang at soccer practice. Mr. Crosswire is taking over as the uh, as a soccer coach. I played a ton of soccer when I was a kid. I don't know about I don't know about you guys. If you did any like rec league sports, I did it a little bit, but I was uh, kind of much like uh, Arthur's team, where I was definitely just getting like nailed with the soccer ball. I was bad. Yeah, the, <laughs> I, I was like Muffy, where I uh, was a goalie, but I just I, I'm touching on something you said more about. The uh, the drills they're running here in this opening, these like CTE inducing, <laughs> like just getting hit in the head with the soccer ball over and over and over, uh, uh, urged on by uh, Mr. Crosswire. It's it's I know that the joke is that these are questionable, but like especially knowing what we know about like CTE and like brain science, this is like extra questionable at this point. It makes me wish that we had like the old uh, Lucas. Do you remember like the the WWE don't try this at home of just like, yes, bo- yeah, like bodies hey, have hey, been bruised. Don't, like, kick, you, don't, you don't have kick a damn clue where he is. <laughs> Arthur getting hit in the face and just like, how is he even able to stand is what I want to know. It's yeah, no, that's that's a great point. With all the talk about with about concussions and CTE these days, these kids are taking headers, and I remember taking a few in my time too. And it made me totally gun shy around soccer balls. I, Lucas, I really have to give it to you. I have a note here that when I was younger, I hated playing goalie because well, all the balls are coming at you. So I appreciate somebody who took up the mantle of goalie. Ooh, I loved playing goalie because I hated moving. Goalie is like a lot of pressure though, because like if you. Uh... You let that ball go in the net. That's Ooh, that's all. Yeah, yeah. that's your yeah. fault. That's no good. You lost the game. You lost the game for the team. See, I always, <laughs> I always like being defense because you would never have to chase the ball. You would run towards it. But if it got past you, then it was still the goalie's responsibility. Like you said, Alex. I don't remember a whole lot from playing soccer, but I remember that I kind of just like didn't really follow the rules like i kind of just did what i wanted and i think that's why it didn't last very long <laughs> do you remember do you remember any of your team names by any chance no no not at all i think oh, i was I just do, on a timbits team it was just the timbits yeah yeah i think i was just the timbits team I, I definitely had a timbits team we we definitely had a subway team at one point uh i think my Ooh. my very first soccer team was the huskies and that's uh, uh, speaking of speaking of husky uh <laughs> mr crosswire sucks Oh yeah, I had a I uh, I was I had a note here that I said, uh, Mr. Crosswire is Elwood City's Elon Musk. Oh no! <laughs> Ooh, okay. Now I've always I've always gotten a, I've always would, gotten would, would, kind would of a... Mr. Crosswire go on the Joe Rogan podcast? <laughs> Imagine Mr. Mr. Crosswire in uh, in uh, Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan's quizzing Mr. Crosswire about his experiences with DMT. <laughs> <laughs> I always kind of, I always kind of saw Mr. Crosswire as more of a, tr- uh, more of a Trumpian vibe to him. What, what, uh, what speaks to you about Elon Musk? 
I just was just like, I think it's just that like, oh, well, uh, Mr. Crosswires, he's like that, that billionaire type and just that type just Elon Musk. And as associate they both have cars. Together. They both, you know, Elon, Elon got the, the Tesla. Mr. Crosswires got Crosswire Motors. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's a good point because I because Mr. Crosswire definitely more successful than Trump, and th- that's one thing you can say about Elon Musk is that he's had I think more a, a bigger success ratio than uh, than old DT. <laughs> uh, I also could see Mr. Crosswire like dropping acid and then like tweeting about how <laughs> he's gonna make like Tesla shorts or whatever. <laughs> I want to. Ch- Crosswire motor shorts. I want to yeah. try something. I'm actually gonna look up <laughs> Elon Musk's Twitter right here. Um, and see if Mr. It would fit Mr. Crosswire. Uh, okay, let me see here. Um, <laughs> da, 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 da. There's a lot of replies in here. Oh, this one about him being on the Joe Rogan podcast. There you go. Uh, oh, yikes. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna. Okay, so I haven't I haven't done this before, so I apologize if it's not good. But I'm gonna try my Mr. Crosswire voice with this one. Number one, safest, quickest, techiest, sexiest, best car for 50,000 pounds to 60,000 pounds. Tesla Model 3 now invading Europe, muffykins. I think what we've just proved is that more is on to something. I got theories, okay? I got theories, and they need to be known. And Elwood City Limits, this is my platform for, for telling he's, the world. He's, bra- he's breaking this wide open. I, see, that's this is what I mean about... About differing opinions, you know, uh, d- uh, Trump. Trump is Trump is sleep. Elon Musk comparisons to Mr. Crosswire is I'm awake now. <laughs> Speaking of memes, uh, yeah. So, uh, so Lucas, Mr. Crosswire sucks. What makes you say that? Uh, he's well. It's just like his. We've watched. We have the context of all these previous episodes, but it's it's just his general mentality, and he's like, oh, I'm rich. Like he's. I think he's meant to suck. Mm. Um, but in the, the context of this opening, he's running this ridiculous soccer drill, uh, giving all the kids uh, CTE. Uh, and then we sort of um, get the opening title card, uh, where it's Muffy's soccer shocker, and we get some context of why it's Mr. Crosswire's now the soccer coach. It used to be, and this. He's in the in uh, competition for throwaway character of the week. It used to be Trevor, <laughs> Coach Trevor. I, okay, so as soon as Trevor showed up, I was like, "Well, that's it. We've got a runaway candidate for throwaway character of the week here." Like now, you've got me thinking about it more and more as I watch these episodes. So, so tr- it's it, it. Listen, it is not as uh uh. It's not over till it's over. It is throwaway character of the week is not as set in stone as you think it is. Okay. Uh, there's a one in the second episode that I have to point out. But right now, I was definitely thinking it was Trevor. Trevor's an Arthur character that we haven't really seen a lot of. Um, we don't see a lot of teenagers on Arthur besides Francine's sister Catherine, who I think she's on the younger spectrum of a teenager. She's probably like 16. Yeah. Um, whereas Trevor, we can tell, is 19 years old. Uh, <laughs> he's almost 20. He's almost 20. Um, and he is like the perfect encapsulation of like a youth pastor. Where he's like, <laughs> like I, I, I can see Trevor being like, hey guys, like, you want to know who is really cool? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I was thinking that Trevor to me seemed like uh, definitely the type who's like coming to teach these kids how to play soccer, but he is like smacked out of his mind. <laughs> I, think, I think we're both right. I think it's a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Trevor's hair is like no other. I'm looking at him right now. It's like no other Arthur character I've ever seen. It's like legendary. He has like. Gosh, I don't even know what to compare this to. It's definitely like like Shane Dawson, like two thousand yeah. and, and and eight hair. <laughs> he he's kind of he's kind of this is the future that liberals want kind of guy because he's he's telling the kids like he he's their old coach and he's just like you know it's it's like you guys played a great game out there and they're like but we lost and he's like yeah but winning isn't everything and I know plenty of people who win that aren't happy and Francine's like I'm not happy I hate losing <laughs> and he's just like this you know it almost seems like a parody of you know how how boomers see millennials of just like all oh, these these snowflakes and they're this they're this and that they're they're liberal uh mind of like everybody should be a winner all this kind of stuff he's just so uh i don't know if granola is the right word but he's very like uh uh way too easygoing which and we actually we actually get kind of the boomer perspective from uh, uh, David Reed, Arthur's dad. Uh, so we cut to 
um, we, we cut to the it's like the parent soccer society meeting at, at Crosswire Motors is like boardroom or meeting room mm-hmm. and this is great because this like in this moment uh, never before has Arthur's dad reminded me so much of my own dad oh yeah me in, too like, me how too. he's like <laughs> Like, Mr. Crosswire's like, I got bad news and good news. And it's like, the Trevor's going to be leaving the soccer team. And uh, Arthur's dad's like, finally. He we- pops off, dude. He pops off. <laughs> He's like, yeah, finally we can win some. <laughs> and then, like, uh, Arthur's mom's like, I think that's the bad news. But he's like, Arthur's dad's, like, stoked. You could tell he's been, he, like, low-key <laughs> has hated Trevor for years. He might as well be doing, like, the she's, like, fully invested in this this children's soccer team. He is, he's putting money down on he, these wins. He, and he's. He's not getting anything. He might as well back. be doing like the shoveling motion to Trevor as he like walks out the door or something. He's so overjoyed, <laughs> so invested in this. And yes, Mr. Crosswire is going to be the new. Uh, he's going to be the new soccer coach, and he's going to take them from what is basically like uh, almost like a Ford Pinto, or like you know one of the. I forget. I forget the brand of the uh, the like crappy motorcycle that he shows to like 16 tons of american steel so that's he also says uh do you want to tootle around on the putt putt or do you want to burn some rubber and i was like no, nobody's really sold but but dad's dad reed is just like well it's more of the shot we don't have any better ideas <laughs> Uh, so that's pretty much what the first half of this episode is, is that they're going through the basic drills and the whole thing is that Ed's drills are all based around like car, like he relates to everything through cars. So there's different drills like, uh, piston is kicking the ball hard. The muffler is kind of doing a, uh, quieter, like a gentler pass. There's the shock of the suspension where they're like, uh, kicking the ball up in the air and keeping it in suspension. And, and during the suspension drill, uh, Mr. Crosswire is hopping up and down on a car like he's in a SoundCloud rap music video, <laughs> like, like he, jumping around like he's a little yeah, punk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's, it's <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> um, and they even have a uh, a team a team chant essentially that he even brings his like uh, his his pitch whistle for. Uh, what what did you guys make of this one? Uh, well, before we get to the chant, I do have to say every time anybody in this episode, and this happens multiple times, um, mentions running the piston drill, mm. uh, it just kind of sounds like they're going to say the word piss. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that happened to me, too. Uh, I thought that I, as well. I, I, more, let's, do, let's, gonna, let's do some there's, piss drills. Well, there's, one, there's, one, there's one part where uh, they're doing the drills, and like I think Muffy's supposed to like do like like a softer kick, and she does the piston and she goes oops i pistoned <laughs> it sounds a little too much like oops I there's pissed. a part where mr it's just, cross it's too close where mr crosswire says let's put some piss tin on it and it's like it's it's too good um and then you think the arthur like the writers were sitting down writing this episode and they were like what if we snuck this in there there's, there's a part at the end where arthur says i just hope i never have to hear the word piss tin again <laughs> And if, if if Arthur had said, I never want to hear the word fists, uh, that would be really funny. You know what, you guys, I, I don't know what it is. You guys, you guys were totally dialed into this. I was just like, yeah, piston, I get it. It's cars. It's, uh, I think it probably. Because our brains are broken. Well, I think, I think it's more of me, the naive summer child of just like, oh, yeah, cars. And it's just like, they, I, I could totally see them in the writer's room just being like, let's try this one, see if we can get this passed. And they did. See if we can get this one on the kids' show. Uh, so speaking of Mr. Crosswire sucking, Muffy also sucks. Okay. So, uh, okay. So before Muffy's definitely in the in the bottom of the uh, the tier list. Oh yeah, of Arthur for sure. For sure. Now, okay. Bottom before tier. we get into the negatives, positives. Mm-hmm. Muffy's literally wearing like a juicy couture sweatsuit. <laughs> at, yeah, no, that's as, hype. As the, uh, her, the her soccer gear. Everybody else is just wearing soccer clothes. Muffy has like one of my notes was actually. One of my notes was actually fit check on Muffy <laughs> while they're playing soccer. <laughs> no, Muffy, Muffy's fit is hyphy. Muffy's fit is is like she got the sweatband, and then she's got like it's like a sweatshirt, but it it looks like it has like some sort of like uh like fringe or like wool lining. Yeah, uh, and then and then the pr- definitely too hot to be wearing while they're playing soccer in like the summer. And and, and then the sweatpants tucked into the matching su- shoes. It's a it's a, definitely it's a heater of a fit. 
Uh, but as a person, um, when Muffy says, what are you saying about my daddy? I'm Ugh. like, oh, this is cursed. Shut up. <laughs> Don't sh- stop talking. This is, this is kind of the, I, I okay, not going to use the word tragedy. It's not that bad. But it's it, it's, it's the shame <laughs> of Muffy's character because it's like we keep waiting for her to like pay off somehow because we've had to do that for other characters throughout the show of just like, I don't really That's like right. them. And then we're just like, oh, but like after this point in the series, they actually get a little better. Muffy kind of hasn't at this point. Francine has learned and grown. <laughs> mm. uh, no one has learned and grown as much as Binky. Yes. Uh, but Muffy is still like episode one, season one Muffy, basically. Still very much still very much the rich joke. Um, I don't mean to derail us from the Muffy point because that is a big part of this episode. I just want to go back real quick. Uh, so the team chant that Ed Crosswire thinks of, <laughs> of is, course. out of the way, for goodness sakes, this old team ain't got no breaks. Now, would you guys call this a slapper or i don't know what the uh i don't know what the opposite of of slaps is i'm old I, i'm saying it's trash oh, it's yeah, trash. Yeah. It's trash this is that's, straight that's like, trash you say that that's this is like eminem kamikaze album <laughs> uh my, yeah, my yeah, word, yeah, yeah it's this is this is eminem freestyling in an empty parking garage oh dude. no that bad oh my god <laughs> oh i'm saying it i'm going there i got i drive a four tour and ain't got no brakes <laughs> That's an awfully hot coffee pot. Should I drop it on Donald Trump? Probably not. <laughs> Holy crap. That's the best. <laughs> that's a real life. No, 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 I don't know if you guys no, see no, that. that. No, that impression. That's so good. Yeah, pride myself. I pride myself that's on my, uh, my Eminem that's impression, weird. among others, that I won't do on the podcast. <laughs> no, no, but happy to show you oh another time. God. You got it. That's, man, that's awesome. <laughs> the only the only thing I, I can add, and I, f- and I feel outclassed next to that, just... Uh, out of the way, for goodness sakes, Venom, never know what hit him. This whole team ain't got no breaks. Yes. I think you got it. <laughs> All right. So we're talking Garbo tier Eminem here. That's uh, that's really the harshest indictment we could have for this team chant. I don't disagree. Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's go. Let's go back to Muffy here. Lucas, we kind of, so we talked about the fit here. That's maybe the best. But the worst, like you, like you kind of touched on, is you know the what are you, what are you saying about my daddy? Yeah, it's it's no good. Uh, um, I and, and also like the the way the internet talks about the word daddy, I don't like hearing Muffy say daddy all the time. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, definitely, the less, definitely became like a cursed word. I, like, I, I just said when when Muffy the way Muffy says, "What are you saying about my daddy?" is very very cursed. And you know what? The less said about that, the better. Uh, Buffy does actually have a good line later on though, where she says she feels like a candle because she's so, so heated. From that was that was emo as yeah, fuck. Yeah, that was cold. That, <laughs> that was some like real that emo. Was shit. Terrific. Yeah. So th- so Muffy's whole deal here is that she is initially very supportive of her father as the coach, but she's also really bad at soccer, and she keeps kind of being singled out uh, for kind of as the star of the team by her dad, but she kind of just doesn't get it so at some point she wants to distance herself from the soccer team and that's when she fakes sick is is (laughs) she pretends to have a fever and she's just like i feel like a candle burning burning she does have i will say her her voice her voice actor melissa altro has always been very good at making her seem at making her dramatic nature kind of stick out Mm. She always kind of sounds like she's about to be like, I feel faint. Uh, a note on Muffy, uh, another <laughs> like uh, a current event that we could touch on is that uh, Muffy is not anti-vax, which I was happy to see. Uh, I was, yeah, I was going to say that as well, because another thing I I, uh, I kind of just assumed that the crosswires would be anti-vaxxers. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. I mean, like, they just, they, they just seem like the type, okay? Well, you know you what? Know? Maybe they are, because Muffy hadn't had her shot yet uh she was due oh, and they're like so maybe she was we got you here we got you here you're getting your shots now it's time for your shots. public medicine is a scam i'm funding uh. a private clinic <laughs> you know, like i could totally see that being like he got hoodwinked into going to a walk-in and then they're gonna pump his daughter full of chemicals you know <laughs> That's I, I don't I don't think that's too far off. Unfortunately, if if, if Ed Crosswire uh, definitely well, not. I mean Ed Crosswire I guess probably is written today. So there's so so much so much material for how you can make fun of the rich today. 
<laughs> Thankfully. Uh, yeah, Muffy's being tired out by these drills. She can't even uh, cut her own food. Uh, she has Francine do it for her. Uh, and everybody's also just kind of fed up with Ed Crosswire. There's a little scene here with Muffy and Ed where uh, he's oh. he's showing her the video of him as a soccer player on, like, an old film reel, like, with black oh, and before, white. Oh, before we get to that, just to step back yeah, quickly, yeah, uh, when Muffy's so tired she can't cut her own food, uh, we have a quick little moment that I appreciated with Buster where uh, <laughs> Buster's having a real, real bad day because uh, everybody calls him out and sort of gets mad at him. I think it's because he, like, references the team chant or something. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but not only does he get called out by the group, uh, he also drops his ice cream cone, which you just hate no. to see that sort of thing for poor Buster. The uh, the little bit of the sound effect when the ice cream cone, like, hits the ground, I felt like that sound effect was, like, a little bit too loud, and it reminded me of, like, an Eric Andre sketch or something almost, <laughs> where the, the, sound of, the sound effect is just a little bit too loud, and it's like, this, this is making me kind of uncomfortable. Like, just a wet ice cream cone? Like, <laughs> yeah, just, like, a wet, like, slap. Buster drops the cone, and there's just, like, scattered applause. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah so so they're looking at this uh this video here and you know Ed, ed's just like i remember this game like it was yesterday i wasn't much of a soccer player we lost like 12 to nothing i can't remember a single game or a single score of any sport that i played when i was a kid i don't know what this is all this is all about Cause... it's been taking his omega-3s <laughs> he's got he's on those rich people vitamins so he's got like a pristine <laughs> me memory take your brain pills <laughs> Yeah, that's right. He's he, Joe Rogan hooked him up with some Alpha Brain, and uh, so he's he's got perfect memory. It's, See, the... it's all it's all coming together now. Yeah, he's I... on those nootropics. He's on the nootropics. Joe Rogan hooked him up when uh, when Ed Crosswire went on the Joe Rogan experience. Oh God, this has got to happen. Like, I wish I wish that I knew. And Crosswire's voice actor, because that's what I would try to say about, like, just take a snippet of a Joe Rogan and then just put his voice in there. It'd be perfect. Well, you know, you know, Joe, uh, the first time I did DMT, uh, and then <laughs> Joe Rogan's, yeah, Joe Rogan's like, uh, so Ed, have you ever seen a gorilla kill a man? Young Jamie, pull up the video of... <laughs> ah. Oh my god. Ed, would, would you look at the size of that thing, Joe? I know, it would tear your head right off. <laughs> so, have you ever done DMT before? <laughs> Getting back to the DMT. Um, so, eventually, th uh, the Elwood, si the, sorry, the Lakewood team is going to be against, is it, is it Mighty Mountain again? Are they facing Mighty Mountain? I, I just assume they're just like the stand-in, like, evil team. Yeah. Yes, I okay, I see the two M's on their jerseys. So at Mighty Mountain, of course, they're rivals, and they're and they are they're just quivering. They are just pretty much pretty much sure they're going to be like mopped the floor is going to be mopped with them and they're not confident in the least. But actually as they start to play the game, it turns out that Ed Crosswire's drills actually kinda worked. Like yeah, they just they're running they're 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 really like they're playing a good game here. Yeah, it's it, and I actually completely forgot this about the episode where it's like all like the piston and the suspension and muffler. Like they just basically call these out, and it's actually pretty good strategy because the uh, the other team doesn't know what those mean, but they've had it basically completely drilled into their heads at this point. We also have I love this touch. Muffy is on the sidelines. She's managed to talk her dad down to being the substitute goalie. So she's just doing commentary with a megaphone. So we get Mouth of the South Muffy Hart on the sidelines just uh cheering on everybody. I loved it. Yeah, that's that's like Muffy makes a great like heel like wrestling manager. <laughs> and in fact like uh as the game goes on, Brain, who's the goalie, accidentally twists his ankle, so they have to call. Yeah, Brain is Brain might have an ACL tear here. Might Brain might be out for the season. <laughs> this was the end of Brain's uh, soccer career. Actually, <laughs> he never played. He again. was never. He never played again after this one game. It's all Ed Crosswire's fault. And he had, to, and he had to go on to sell propane and propane accessories. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so Muffy's got some good lines here I, I like this Ed's like we're going to call in our substitute goalie And she's like yes we're calling the replacementator The substitute too good to be true So you know a couple, couple good ones Better than out of the way for goodness sakes Oh, A few things aren't <laughs> uh, But of course that means Muffy's being called in 
And uh, we also we do get some cutaways as the game is going on to again Dave Reed in the audience are just like we only got ten seconds left. Come on, way way more enthusiastic than than one should be. <laughs> um, yeah, Ar- that- Arthur's dad is probably. Uh, my favorite part of this entire episode <laughs> like just the idea of like like Arthur barely cares about this soccer game but his like dad is like so into it uh, he's yeah, hype he's, he is very hype and we we will talk about his reaction in a second here because Muffy initially lets a goal in but uh, eventually she does actually manage to save and they tie the game against the Mighty Mountain and Dave is overjoyed he's just like we tied we tied <laughs> And he's like hugging Brain's dad. He's beside himself. He's so happy. A good piece of uh, soccer realism there. The game ending in a tied game. Yeah, you definitely don't see that in any real soccer game. But I remember games ending in ties all the time. Oh, no, no, no. Like, that's the thing. In soccer, like, they tie all the time. Even at, like, the World Cup. It's like oh, really? constant ties. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. That's like a, a notorious thing about soccer is that, like, it, it ends in a tie more often than not. Sometimes in really boring soccer games, a tie of 0-0. Zero, zero. Oh, <laughs> God. Um, I will say this, though. As much as Muffy can uh, is annoying in this episode, she does take that one save like a champ. She just basically takes the soccer ball in the gut and like keeps it, be- keeps it be- above the line and then just kind of crumples over. I felt bad for her. This, this is actually kind of the end of the episode. So Muffy makes a save. They manage to tie... Uh, Ed's really proud of her. They hoist her up. She she gets a chant for some reason. Just like okay, you stopped one goal. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> it's very Rudy. It's very. But like... that's that's more than th- than that team is used to. No, though, that's so. a good point. Got got to keep in mind the enthusiasm of Arthur's dad, and you know maybe everyone else is feeling that yeah. too. And we actually cut from here. There's a shot of like Muffy waving at a camera, and then from that camera we go into a futuristic living room, and we see adult <laughs> Muffy and her son, and they're watching video of this soccer game. And it turns out that when Muffy gets older, around her dad's age, she also becomes a soccer coach and keeps the out of the way for goodness sakes chant going. She's another Ed Crosswire. I don't want to get too high concept here. Uh Do you guys think that when we see future Muffy in the future uh, uh, soccer team, is this some sort of like dystopia where like the 1% is living in this like future (laughs) apartment complex? But if you open those shutter blinds, (laughs) it's like pure chaos out there. Like they're, yeah, they're up in their ivory tower, like watching these soccer drills, but it's like the purge just outside their, (laughs) their, their, their gates. Yeah. What are you talking about, dude? This took place in 2019. (laughs) <laughs> oh no <laughs> i feel like all when whenever there's like a shot of maybe i'm wrong whenever there's like a cut to the future in arthur are they is it just me or like, are they always wearing those like space suits and stuff like is it always like like the biggest exaggeration of what the future might it's be? always a very 2000s future of just like everything is chrome and glittery and like off-white and like I kind of love it's, it. It's it's a it's a look. They're committing to it. So, um, yeah, you're right. There is always that kind of chromium gray uh, quality to everything. Now, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, and uh, Lucas Alex, I'm sorry if this might offend your sensibilities. Um, so, I actually really liked what we saw of Adult Muffy. I really would like to see more of her. I don't. I can't. I'm not sure. I can exactly communicate why she reminds me a little bit of Bulma from Dragon Ball Z. Interesting. I know it's it, it's it's cool that um, usually when uh, uh, characters are their adult version of themselves, it's the like child voice actor kind of putting on an adult voice, like I am, or not even a child, but the voice actor who does the child's voice putting on like I am an adult now. Uh, but because Muffy was always just an adult woman, she's just kind of using her regular speaking voice, which I thought was an interesting touch. Yeah, it's like pretty much they get to almost drop their character's voice a little bit and uh, well get to get to get to play around with it. It's it is fun, I agree. And it is done just rarely enough that it's never like oh, you know, oh, we're seeing future Arthur again or something. And that's pretty that's pretty much the end of that episode. We're going to go right from that into a word from us. 
And now a word from me, Lucas Mancini of Elwood City Limits. Don't forget to chat with your Elwood City Limits pals on social media with facebook.com slash Elwood City Limits or at ECL Podcast on Twitter. We also have a Tumblr, elwoodcitylimits.tumblr.com and an Instagram, at Elwood City Limits. If you want to send us a question, send us an email and get it read on the show at elwoodcitylimits at gmail.com. You can find the entire episode archive at elwoodcitylimits.libsyn.com or on your favorite podcast service. If we aren't on your preferred podcast app, let us know, and we'll do our best to get on it. Thanks, as always, for supporting us here at Elwood City Limits. Now, back to the show. And we're back. Okay, now, let's get into the real meat of the goings-on here. This is Brother, Can You Spare a Clarinet? Uh, and, of course, the episode starts off with Binky. He's bringing a present to Arthur, and this is this is actually kind of interesting that we're at, that we're talking this way in almost a metatextual way about the character of Binky because in this cold open Arthur's talking about how there seems to be two different Binkies there's bully Binky and then there's quote the other guy who is I wrote down uh, I wrote down Binky could be your angel or your devil <laughs> <laughs> he could it's true um, I love that there's such like a like the such a contrast in like the two different sides of Binky where it truly is your angel or your devil. <laughs> um, yeah. I it's, and we see him doing kind of, uh, good, g- you know, Paragon and Renegade acts in, uh, this little, uh, side by sides like Binky playing, like scaring away birds, but then also playing his clarinet and attracting birds and all this kind of stuff. And we also get the duality here because the president turns out to be, is a spring loaded pie to the face, uh, for Arthur, and then Binky is literally perched outside of his house waiting for him to open it and just says, ha, what a doofus. And then Arthur's about to, like, rip up the paper, and he's like, wait, I recycled the paper. Don't rip it. <laughs> now, as, more, as far as pranks and social experiments go, uh, is this an epic prank or not? <laughs> um... I'm gonna say yeah. I'm gonna say it's a pretty epic prank. I didn't see, I didn't see, I didn't see the pie in the face coming because you know with Binky, you never know what you're gonna get. You could get the angel or the devil. And Arthur, you know, you, you win some, you lose some. He got the devil today. <laughs> that's that's uh, the role I of would, dice. You you gotta play it. As far as like epic pranks go, um, you know, Binky Binky's not on like a like a uh, like a Jake Paul level <laughs> of like epic pranks. Oh, like, B- B- <laughs> Binky's Binky's not burning Arthur's mattress in the backyard or anything. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like Binky, you know, he's got a he can learn a thing or two from watching uh, watching some Jake Paul for his pranks, I guess. But you know, he's on the right track. It's it's not yet every day, bro, for Binky. But I will say this: no. we, we we still get a little bit of the angel because after he pranks Arthur, he's uh, sure to uh, uh, clarify that he needs to keep the wrapping paper because he recycles it. <laughs> Next thing we know, Binky's going to be in the suicide forest. Oh no! <laughs> careful, careful what you say. Uh, so we do. So this episode, of course, is music themed, and as we know, Binky does play the clarinet. Um, and in fact, throughout this episode, Lucas, you have a, a pretty good ear for this too. Did you notice that, and maybe Alex, you did too, that with some of the normal Arthur stings we're used to hearing, they added in a bit of clarinet flourishes. Oh, you know what? I don't think I noticed this. That's no, really I, cool. I didn't pick up on that. I think it's, and I think, uh, with, with, with us, it's like we kind of hear them basically every week from the amount that we watch Arthur. But for me, it was like, oh, it's the normal, like, but with a little, <laughs> yeah, it, that that being a clear net. I gotta go back and re-listen to that because I want I did not notice that when I watched through the episode. They're pretty good. They fit. They fit in pretty naturally. So the idea of this episode is that the kids who are all in the school band are going to be trying out for the the youth orchestra, and uh, of course everybody thinks that Binky is going to be a shoe in, but he's been having a problem lately. His clarinet is uh, going bad on him. So his, uh, in fact. We get there's this terrific shot of Binky playing like by lamplight in his bedroom at night, and he tries playing it. And every once in a while, he'll like start playing and he'll just go like Meh, or just make a discordant note, and he just throws it away. He goes, "Music stinks." 
which he's not I wrong. I have to agree. Yeah, I was just going to say. Agree. Music does stink. <laughs> uh, more, have you ever been played a show or something and just have a, a an instrument or a piece of equipment just go bad on you? Um. Oh, so like when I like first started playing shows and stuff, I had the worst luck possible where just like something went wrong every time. Like the first show I ever played, my guitar strap broke. And then another show, no, I've broken like three guitar straps playing shows. <laughs> and uh, like I've unplugged my stuff like by accident a hundred times and like had pedals stop working and stuff. One time I forgot how to play a song like halfway through oh, it. No. So, you know, music... <laughs> Muse, I've had some 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 rough goes, but yeah. So I can confirm, you, playing music does stink a lot of the time. <laughs> um, uh, now, counterpoint to music stinking, Buster says he's gonna play a song called Seventy Six Tubas. I I need to hear that. I, I was I just gonna to say Seventy Six Tubas. Seventy Six Tubas sounds like it is. Uh, that sounds good. That sounds very good. A slapper. A yeah. slapper, I would. Say. Well, have, have have either of you guys heard the uh, the song he's covering, Seventy Six Trombones? I have not. Okay. No. Because that's haven't. apparently what he's going to be adapting for tuba. Um, I also have a question <laughs> for you guys. Did, were either of you in your school band? Uh, I was. Oh, I most for, certainly for a little was bit. not. What did you play, Alice? I was in my school band for two years. Uh, when I started, I started playing the trombone, and then I realized that I didn't like it at all and uh some of the other well like at my at my uh my junior high school that was when i did mm-hmm. it um there was like a band class for like each uh like grade i guess and i was like oh well like some of the other uh classes have like a bass player in the school band so i'm just gonna show up with my bass and decide that's what i'm gonna play now <laughs> so one day so one day i showed up at school with my bass guitar and i was like this is what i'm gonna do in the band now and my teacher was like obviously and like very clearly not very happy about that <laughs> but it was like what are you gonna do I'm, i don't have a trombone here am i still not gonna play this class so I, I i played uh bass guitar in my school band for like another like two years and then i got bored of playing these classical songs and stuff and i just you, stopped you uh you so you kind of lived through uh, not to get too ahead of ourselves, but Binky does a very similar tactic where Binky just refuses to bring his tr- uh, his uh, clarinet to class out of protest. Oh, the, uh, the, now, the, imp- were, the impudence on display, as we'll yeah, get yeah. to. <laughs> were you, you were, I assume you were not sent to the principal's office with a list of offenses. Uh, <laughs> when type, you instead a, brought your... a typewritten list of grievances. Yeah, uh, number one, uh, Moore refuses to bring the trombone. Number two, brought a bass instead. Uh, number three, talks back in class. That's right. I, I gotta say, bring, I gotta say, bring that, bring in your bass move. That is a top grade school grift there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my, uh, my, my, my band teacher was kind of a. Uh, a loser, anyways, because we had we had, <laughs> we had to we, we had to do a pro we had to do a project one year on uh, on a musician who had because like I mean aside from like playing songs and stuff sometimes we would have to do like projects uh, one of the projects was we had to do like a research thing on uh, a musician who had passed away and I decided I wanted to do mine on uh, Notorious B.I.G. and my te- my te- my teacher told me no because rap music isn't real music oh. and I was like, okay. Boo, I was, what a herb! Yes, I was. I, I was fully expecting to be like anybody can sit down at a computer and press some buttons and make a song, uh. but it takes a real artist. It takes a real artist to pick up a six string and plug it in and turn it up to eleven and rock out. Oh. Um, so I, I can't remember what I ended up doing. You weren't kidding. That, that guy project. is a loser. Yeah. You uh, speaking don't know of what losers, he's up to now, but uh, I, we'd be remiss if we didn't uh, touch on. Uh, Muffy, yes, uh, having privatized security in this school. So, so you want to talk about this? Might be the most late capitalism Arthur gets. <laughs> is that Muffy has a uh, state of the art violin under like digital lock? A a, and a, her, a Stradivarius, her, a Stradivarius mm-hmm. that her father has hired private security guards to follow her around it's so expensive that she needs like literally like black water or like a pmc to like or paladin security to follow her around the school (laughs) just in case like somebody tries to break it um another reason that like 
Muffy does something in this episode that makes her like so unlikable when she's like, and this caught co- my daddy paid more money for this than all of your instruments put together or like something like that. Ugh. And oh, it's so, so just like so annoying. Um, and and <laughs> this goes along with a really terrific line that I had to act like I th- you have to had to kind of think about it for a second, but it was Miss Krasny, the uh, the band teacher. She says, Muffy, you know that private security guards are not allowed in class, <laughs> which like. Has she brought private security to class before? This? Wouldn't put it Is this faster. not the first time? They, they, I, I, I forgot about this. I'm watching the episode right now. They like attempt to assault Buster. Yeah, <laughs> like Buster gets too close, and they're like, "Buster, you gotta back away." <laughs> yeah, and like I don't know, maybe she got these guys like just got them on Fiverr or something, and they're just there for the <laughs> afternoon or something. But clearly, this is not the first time she's pulled a stunt like this, and this actually dovetails pretty well into. Uh, uh, Binky, Binky's sass mouth. Man, this is yeah, this is sass oh. master. Uh, you know they're doing a specific <laughs> like concerto built around a clarinet. Uh, excuse me, it might not be a concerto. Uh, a music piece built around the clarinet, and Miss Krasny's like, "Well, we can't, we can't do the piece for clarinet without the clarinet." And Binky's like, "Well, I guess you better find somebody to do that, then, lady." And- <laughs> The fact, that he calls her, the fact that he calls her he lady got him. is he like, got him. the fact that he calls her lady is like really crazy. Like it's like when people like clap back on Twitter and they're like, oh, Google it, honey. And like, yeah. It, or like, that ain't it, sis. That ain't it, sis. <laughs> oh, God, look it up yourself, sweetie. Like, <laughs> well, and like, you, I feel it's called fashion, sweetie. I, <laughs> I feel like we've all had that moment where, like, and me, and, and I mean, just speaking for myself, I've had a couple of moments in grade school when, like, the, the clap back, like you said, against a teacher is so savage that, like, everybody's heart stops beating for a second because, like, it's just they'll they'll say they'll say something like Binky says, just like just calling the calling the teacher like lady or dude or like dropping a swear in there, and you're just like they're gonna die, <laughs> like it's that bad. <laughs> You've... Yeah, she's gonna call the private security back in and, and forcibly remove Binky, uh, escort Binky out of the classroom. <laughs> yeah, I, unfortunately that happens off camera because we we smash cut to Binky's list of offenses, typewritten, uh, yeah, with the letterhead, yeah. yeah. Refuses to play in class, does not bring his clarinet to class, and uh, talks back in class. And I just got to say, uh, free Binky, free the Hobie. <laughs> and another thing that's really good about this scene, uh, first of all, I want to say Mr. Haney is another god tier character yes, in our I- thing. I'm glad that you picked up about that. Me and Will have talked <laughs> because, about like, how Mr. This, Haney this is whole, amazing. This whole bit is based around Mr. Haney like doesn't know who Binky is. Because <laughs> Binky's like, who am I, Mr. Haney? And Mr. Haney starts like going through the files till he's like, oh, who am I? Binky's like, I'm a doofus. Well, there's no doofus at this school. <laughs> this is- no, Mr. Mr. Haney is like, you can tell Mr. Haney is like not a competent person at his job. Like he's <laughs> And like the picture of Mr. Haney behind Mr. Haney with like just his like smiling face is also very funny and very good. This is this is Haney at like maybe his stupidest because it's like <laughs> He doesn't know what his name is, and he's also, like, not following Binky's. Essentially, Binky's doing, like, a Pacino monologue here of just, like, just, like, <laughs> I used to be somebody. You know, just when I thought I was up, they pulled me back in. Like, the, like this kind of stuff. He's, like, pacing. He's looking out the window. Like, it's it's the start of his kind of super villainy as this episode goes on. And Haney is just, like, like, like you said, Alex, it's just, like, no, there's no Wadoofus at this school. Like, your name is Binky. And then Binky's, like, see you in detention, Mr. Haney. He's, like, yes, that's right, detention. Uh, like, I, I know it's harsh. And just, like, boy, Haney, Haney, speaking of, speaking of herbs. Herb, uh, Herb Haney is a big one. Uh, we we got to talk about so uh, Will, me and you have the context of watching all of Arthur in, in linear <laughs> order. Yeah, uh, we kind of have seen Binky's role change. We've seen the softening of Binky as a character, uh, uh, where you know he kind of started out as just like a straight up foil for Arthur. Like he always had his like secret, how he kind of secretly loved to read mm-hmm. or how he secretly did ballet. But now we've, we've kind of seen Binky just become accept accepted in the regular fold. We haven't seen Binky, uh, uh, as his old intimidating self for like seasons now, I feel like. Yeah. A long um, time. And, 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 
And so I thought it was really interesting that the show kind of directly addresses that here. Like, I never really noticed it, but it's like, yeah, the Binky character's completely different than when we first started. And they're kind of acknowledging this with Binky being like, you know, I lost my edge. Like, it, it, it's time for me to get back to, like, being the bully I used to be. And I thought that was, like, pretty nuanced. And, and also, um, it does that thing where it's it's such a good callback that it adds realism to the show. Like, it's, it's, it's almost making it seem... Um, not episodic, but uh, serialized in that in, in that uh, uh, it's acknowledging like Binky's past. Binky's doing like the, the Dean Ambrose heel turn of just like mm. you people made me <laughs> soft, you people made me weak. I need to. Rem- I'm a killer. I need to remember who I am. I was gonna say Binky does this thing in the episode where like he kind of like growls at people like a dog. He does that a lot. Yeah, <laughs> and like. All I'm saying is that, like, if I if I was walking down the street one day and someone comes up to me and they growl at me like a dog, like I'm like, you want my wallet? You want my phone? I'm I'm handing it over. That's scary. It's, yeah, yeah. If, if someone comes up to me at the Dartmouth Bridge Terminal and is like, "Can I bum a dart off you?" I'm he, they're getting the whole pack. I'll wa- I'll walk inside and buy them a pack if I have to. <laughs> Just, I'll, they're getting what they want, what they whatever they need. I, I'm here to help. Them. See, it, do you guys think Biggie is a big DMX fan? Uh, do, do you, okay, so this this is this is an e- editing exercise for anybody who knows how to edit video. Every time Binky growls in this episode, followed up with with a DMX quote. So just like, you think this is a game? Yeah, I got no love for a. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It's a big. It's big binky energy, is what it is. It's just like there's only big binky energy. There's only beep, beep, beep. there's only one person who can just growl, and that's it. There's nothing else that needs to be said, and that's Binky. And he ends up hooking up. Like you said, he's he's back on it. He's back in his BS. He's hooking up with the tough customers. <laughs> and in fact, they even say like, "Do you guys hear? Do you guys hear what that is? Yeah, Binky's back." And like implying that he hasn't like been the way he is in this episode for a very long time and lucas you and i huge fans of the tough customers um there's a tremendous line here where it's like uh rattles favorite character of the show is asking binky like what what the big plan is to get up to mischief rattles is like are we gonna are we gonna like pants somebody it's or it's it's been a long time since we pulled anybody's (laughs) pants down which is a which is a which is a mint line and then binky follows it up with Later with the pants rattles, we got bigger galoshes to fry. <laughs> Which doesn't make any sense. No, it's but it's so funny. Like it's the exact kind of energy. Like if I I recently went back and listened to the episode we did on the Arthur World's Greatest Gleeper, which is in the first season. Yes. It's the one where Arthur gets involved with the tough customers. And our favorite thing about them is when they're like basically the kid mafia. They're they're, they're kind of talking like these wise guys, but, you know, the stakes are so hilariously low that it just provides the comical kind of uh, dissonance there. And this is kind of getting back to this a little bit. They're they're Uh, they're talking like made men on the playground. Now, I've I've briefly talked about this with Will before, but more I think you'll appreciate this is that uh, uh, Rattles... Uh, donning his backward baseball cap, uh, kind of looks like someone who would be way into title fight. Like, oh no, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Like rattles, hundred percent. Rattles like loves turnstile. Like, <laughs> well, uh, like w- what I said earlier about how they all look like uh, they all dress the way that like hardcore kids dress. Yeah. Like now, uh, a friend of mine went to a Code Orange show mm-hmm. and he had made this custom shirt himself that had a picture of the tough customers on oh, it and said code orange wow. and apparently the <laughs> i thought it was sick but uh i don't know if the band was too happy about it or not but everybody else saw it was funny that's, i thought that that is very very cool that's tremendous um also biggie's just got some great lines in this episode earlier when mr haney is talking to him uh and he's like talking about his rap sheet uh biggie says it's a start uh, yeah, and, and also uh, at, at what he's decided to do his heel turn, he says, "So long, wimp." Hello, Binky. Yeah, it's it, it like it, it. There is a there is a part of his personality that really feels like bullying is part of his nature, and he's, he's there's real glee in him going back to accepting his old bad ways. Um, we so essentially, Binky says that it, they're, for their next plan, let's just say silence is golden. So him and the tough customers go about basically stealing everybody's instruments and, as they say, refinishing them, basically turning them into crappier versions of their instruments. 
there's one scene where there's like a poster up on a door that just says silence is golden mm-hmm. and it's like it feels like it's some like banksy shit like <laughs> Someone's going around the school putting up these mysterious posters. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they they don't succeed in getting Muffies though. But again, late capitalism. Uh, uh, the only uh, we can't count on the police to protect the kids. Only privatized security <laughs> uh, is the thing to prevent like Muffies uh, instrument from being stolen. And once again, proving my point. Um, uh, so all of these instruments being refinished, it reminded me of a couple of episodes ago with that like flashback to like if they don't get the money for the school band, then there'll be all these like uh, cardboard instruments and stuff. They basically ruin them by like um, they tape up Arthur's piano keys together. They put newspaper around Francine's drums. They put a potted plant in Buster's tuba. That's my favorite. Yeah, that's that's good. my also my favorite one is the potted plant that, in Buster's tuba. <laughs> When they're they're like walking down the street and Buster's like, hold on a second. He starts yes. watering his potted plant in the tuba. <laughs> that <laughs> it's so good, ter- terrific visual gag. I love that. So that so that's the thing is that they're trying to eliminate music in the school. And Binky's reach is apparently he uh, he wants Buster at one point says he heard Binky say today Elwood City tomorrow the world. And Brain retorts, it is scientifically impossible for a nine-year-old to end music around the world. <laughs> and then and then Buster says, but Binky has three other nine-year-olds to help him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's again, like this is this is what makes it so funny. It's so low stakes, but everybody treats it like it's life or death. Like a super <laughs> like like a supervillain plot. Like that's kind of the idea, is that Binky is getting these ideas from bionic bunny and stuff like that we'll get into that in a second uh as buster is like you said more uh watering his flowers uh they they actually hear him playing in a music shop on a on a brand new clarinet which unfortunately is what a thousand dollars three thousand dollars so yeah i think it's a thousand yeah or i wanted to ask you about this and i i know you you're not an expert on the woodwind instruments but uh (laughs) is is like a thousand dollars crazy for a new clarinet or is that pretty much like industry standard like is this log and mcquaid employee like taking (laughs) Biggie's parents for suckers like uh or or is this pretty much uh the status quo I, I mean, I can't. I, I don't know about about clarinets, but like, I feel like a thousand dollars for like like a like a very high quality instrument is like is like pretty normal, mm-hmm. pretty fair. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, yeah, not not an expert on uh, on clarinets. It doesn't <laughs> surprise me that it's that much money, and and I'm sure depending on the make and like what what a clarinet or any kind of instrument is made out of like it can run up to that it like i wasn't surprised at all i've just never been musically talented so i never had to ask my parents to buy me <laughs> any musical instruments uh so binky's really trying to sell that he needs his clarinet and his old one again and just sounds worse and worse in fact he throws it in the trash as they leave the uh the instrument store and then brain has an idea that they can actually uh, uh fix it so apparently he does overnight, and they bring it over to Binky's, and it initially works, but... Oh, oh no, before we okay. get to that, oh, so yeah, yeah, this yeah. is where, uh, up until this point, Trevor was uh, definitely, like, ahead of the pack for throwaway character of the week. Okay. But then we are introduced to this anti-bionic bunny cow uh, <laughs> uh, that is developing, like, sound technology that, like, uh, negates bionic bunny's uh, uh, superpowers. Uh, and this guy is just wonderful. And he's great. <laughs> an anti so, an anti bionic sound wave, which is where he gets his idea for his next scheme. You're right. Uh, okay, good. So good uh, it, it's a, it's officially if you're keeping track of the uh, 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 throwaway characters of the week, this might be the first tie in throwaway character of the week history between Trevor and the antic by buddy bionic buddy cow. <laughs> See, the thing I took away from this scene where he's watching bionic bunny is they have the anti bionic sound wave, which they put through the like the vents of this apartment and it goes up to bionic bunny and he's in his living room sitting on a recliner (laughs) eating a tv dinner and watching the love ducks oh dude it's so funny it's so it's so (laughs) weirdly pathetic for the superman figure of just like imagine superman just eating a tv dinner and watching cartoons it's such a strange (laughs) sight it was so fascinating to me uh, so yes, they do bring the apparently fixed clarinet back to Binky's, uh, and he starts playing it and it sounds okay. 
But then he keeps playing it, and then a bunch of paper clips and chewing gum go spitting out. And he's like, hey, and he, he gives a great line. He says, hey, you're just gooning me. I know. I was like. They, Love they, that. You're just gooning me is crazy. Like, it almost sounds like a slur, almost. <laughs> uh, but, like, I was like, are, is this okay? But uh, it's in Arthur, so it definitely is, and it's definitely going to become a part of my vernacular from now on. Uh, <laughs> next time tr- someone tries to pull an epic prank, bro, on me, I'll be like, no, 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 no. Uh, you're just trying to goon me. <laughs> Goon's such a versatile word. It needs to be used more. Um, so Binky is full steam ahead on Silence is Golden, and they have their, uh, what was it, anti-music machine? Was that what they called it? Yes, the anti-music machine. <laughs> which is ju- uh, which is the which is the clarinet, and then they have, like, a megaphone hooked up to a wagon to amplify how bad it sounds. <laughs> and they're going to pipe it into the youth orchestra auditions to make everybody sound terrible. Now, now more, you talked about your band Frailheads. Uh, but you know, you also have your project, uh, uh, Shepherds of Arcadia, uh, uh, you know, and, and you've been one known to make uh, noise music from oh, time yeah. to time. Uh, what, what is your read on a uh, Binky's anti-music machine? Like, and, and how good would it be as like a noise tape? Like, I was going to say that the anti anti noise machine looks like something that like a weirdo would would use at a noise show or something <laughs> like like a clarinet a clarinet like hooked up to a megaphone and then ran through like seven distortion pedals or something it's uh I feel like the anti uh music machine would uh it could it could make some good noise music I think I think it would be good I, I I'm interested in uh and how it could be used. Uh, we we do get a little bit of the auditions here and there because the idea is that they're looking for different vents to play it through. I always appreciate in Arthur how when the kids play their instruments, they're not the best at them. Like, it would be easy to just, like, put in, you know, just... Arthur playing, you know, Beethoven's fifth or whatever, and he and there's no mistakes or anything. But you hear him playing here, and he's like kind of halting. He makes a couple of sour notes here and there. It's like they're just kids, and I I just appreciate that. I've always appreciated that little attention to detail. And in the case of like Muffy, she's like comedically terrible at it, uh, which is basically her comeuppance for you know being the only one with a working instrument. And it's kind of a little mini lesson of it just goes to show that uh, just because you buy the best instrument instrument doesn't mean you have talent. Correct. Um, so they keep trying to find different vents. Uh, they there's the scene where they are trying to go through a vent through the boys' washroom, but Mr. Morris is in there, the janitor, and he's just like <laughs> doing doing the full morning prep. He's like gargling. He's drying his hair, his ears, really. <laughs> Uh, this 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 is a good visual gag. This is really really yeah. funny. Like like every time Mr. Morris keeps looking back at them, looking into the bathroom, and then he just pulls something else out to do. <laughs> and, and not really sure if he's like aware of what they're trying to do, or if this if he's just gonna do this anyway. Uh, and then they find one at the uh, in the gymnasium, but they don't even get they don't even get to use the music machine, the anti music machine outside of their test because they open the vent and Muffy's playing her Stradivarius, and Riles is like, "Looks like somebody beat us to it, boss." <laughs> I also love how he keeps calling Binky yes. boss throughout throughout the episode. I, I love. I was that. just about to say that it's just like <laughs> Rattles is the perfect like bebop and rock steady here. He's just it's always <laughs> boss. Like he never calls him by his name. It's so good. <laughs> Uh, and then Binky gets so upset that Muffy is playing so badly that he actually goes in and interrupts the auditions and plays on his clarinet. And even though it's it, it, Binky, Binky here reminds me of that viral video where the guy's like yelling at the guy uh, uh, playing the trumpet in public. More, do you know the one I'm talking about? Where it's like, you suck. You're you're oh, no yeah, talent. Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the idea that like Binky like he completely loses sight of his plan because he's so bad about how bad uh, uh, Muffy is. Like, you gotta go get yourself a gig. <laughs> you, Lucas, you gotta send me that. That sounds funny. Uh, oh my god, that video is legendary. <laughs> um, yeah, so Binky actually ends up impressing the judges the most, and uh, as he goes to leave, they actually offer him the spot in the youth orchestra, and Binky immediately abandons all his evil plans. Uh, and because that's, I mean, that's kind of what's been, I mean, you've, you've been, 
following through through him the whole episode. It's just like, that's all really Binky really wanted is he just wanted to be able to play his music. And when he wasn't able to, he was frustrated. And when he's frustrated, he kind of becomes his bully persona. So there's always, there's always kind of a meaning behind why Binky is being mean. uh, Usually there's, there's just a couple of instances in here when he's just mean to be mean because he kind of likes it. Uh, In fact, here at the end of the episode, it's like Binky is offered the role in the uh, youth orchestra and they offer to buy him a new clarinet. He's very excited and he goes to leave and on the way out, even though he's happy and like not necessarily a bully anymore. In fact, he denounces silence as golden by I believe he says silence stinks, if I'm not mistaken. (laughs) And then on the way out, he just pushes George down and laughs at him just like, Um, yes, this is for me. A top ten Arthur ending, <laughs> not since the ending of the lice episode where we just kind of have a steady shot on the lice dying. If you remember that, yes. one of the strangest and most dark and memorable Arthur endings of all time. Uh, this ending where Binky's walking into like the literal sunset, and Buster goes, "There goes a true musical hero," and then Arthur <laughs> goes, "No, Buster." There goes Binky. And then he, like, pushes George <laughs> to the ground. It's hilarious. But it also, like, perfectly encapsulates what we started the episode talking about, how, like, you know, Binky can be your angel or your devil. Um, I think it's just – it's such a great bow to wrap up this whole episode in. I loved it. Mm-hmm. And it just goes – and it really communicates that Binky is kind of both and kind of neither. And that's the beauty of his – Yeah, in conclusion, the- Binky is a series of contracts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So let's so let's get into it. We usually rewind the episode here and talk about our feelings in general on the two stories that we've gone to. More, I'd love to know what you thought of Muffy's Soccer Shocker. Muffy's Soccer Shocker, definitely some good moments, but uh, pales in comparison to uh, the Binky episode, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Binky episode definitely uh, uh, outshines that one for sure, but... Um, yeah, Muffy Soccer Shocker, good episode. You know, it was a good, nice. Uh, it was a nice comeback to uh, watching Arthur for me. I think. Oh, good. That's. I'm. I'm really glad to hear that. Uh, Lucas, uh, what do you have to say? I'm with more on this one. Uh, I I wasn't actually that big of a fan of Muffy Soccer Shocker. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked. There's are aspects of it I liked. I liked Arthur's dad. Uh, I liked uh, uh, Mr. Crosswire being like a crazy person making these kids run these like CTE inducing drills. Uh, I think my favorite image of the episode is him hopping up and down on the car like he's a little pump. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I like I like piston. That stuff's really good. But like I, I think it. The problem is it's a Muffy episode, and I just don't like Muffy. And I don't, especially don't like when Muffy doesn't really see any character growth. Like, what what did Muffy learn from that episode? I guess to believe in herself and, uh, uh, you know, try to be good at soccer, even though she's not the best inherently. But, like, Muffy still kind of, like, sucks, and then she kind of carries that over <laughs> to Can You Spare a Clarinet, where it's like, oh, yeah, Muffy, like, still sucks. So I'm still, I feel like I'm not going to be able to get into a Muffy episode until her character changes a little bit. And she's not just like terrible all the time. Mm. Um, I I tend to agree with with you, Lucas. I think that I didn't really have a lot of notes for this episode, and I just kind of felt there wasn't a whole lot to it. There were some funny aspects to it, like we talked about with Dave Reed. I thought he was very funny. And you know what? It's I'm of two minds about something because we actually we didn't get any Muffy development. We actually got more development for Ed himself as a character. Like he actually came across as somebody who like genuinely wants to see Muffy succeed. Like he actually kind of seems like less of a caricature and more of a person which is good but i also kind of don't want to see him as a person you know what i mean (laughs) like if there's somebody that i don't mind staying like a shallow joke it's the the out the outright capitalist of the show like i don't mind him being the butt of humor you know what i'm saying like i'm not you're saying you're 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 not i feel you uh, i feel it it up the uh four hour combo with joe rogan in your podcast queue you're not looking forward to hear uh (laughs) uh ed crosswire's thoughts on like uh 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 you know uh I don't know, like South African apartheid or whatever, like <laughs> under or, or like under, bear attacks. Under no circumstances, my G. <laughs> Man, it's just so. Um, yeah, the the main kind of thrust of the story, I was not really into. It's it's fine. It's it's not. I wouldn't say it's bad necessarily, but if you're not a Muffy fan, I don't really see uh, necessarily sticking around for this one. I'm a, I again, I hold out hope that she gets. 
uh, something in the future. But like you said, Lucas, for right now, there's not a whole lot that's drawing me to the character of Muffy. Now, now let's get into a little bit more long form thoughts on uh, brother. Can you spare a clarinet? Now we, I think we can all agree that we liked this one a lot better. More, I'd love to hear what you thought, what what you really liked and took away from this. A lot of the like uh, the Arthur episodes that I've gone back and watched in recent memory are ones that I like remember watching as a kid, and this is one that I did not remember watching as a kid, but. This episode is so good. It's so good. <laughs> it's so so good. There's so many like good visual gags. There's like so many good lines. I I don't have any issues with this episode, I don't think. It's uh yeah, it's really 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 great. <laughs> And it just it just it makes me love the character of Binky that much more, I think. Then I, I think our job is done. <laughs> the gospel of Binky has been spread. Uh Lucas, <laughs> your thoughts. Yeah, I agree with more on this one. This might be – this is uh, – it's a little early to say this, but this is definitely one of my favorites of season six thus far. Mm. Uh, I, again, it's got the advantage of being a Binky episode, and as we, we've we said before, Bink, uh, a lot of Binky can make a good episode great, but uh, it, it's not just that it's a Binky episode like – like Moore said, with the with the flower pot and the tuba to the Mr. Haney scene, uh, to Binky talking back, uh, uh, all the stuff about like music stinks and Binky like having like a weird vendetta of trying to like get rid of all music, uh, <laughs> you know the the valiant return of the tough customers. Uh, but it's not just how funny it is and all that stuff. It also is again like we talked about before. It's it's a really great like character piece on the Binky character and sort of like trying to comment on, you know, Binky used to be this, like, intimidating guy that everybody feared and that he's sort of gotten softened as the kids got to know him better and that he tried to, like, go back to his old ways. I think it's really clever and I think it's really well done, but it also is helped by being just, like, a really, really funny episode. I think we are just as in unison as the youth orchestra. I agree. Uh, I really liked this episode, a favorite of the season so far for sure. I mean, I mean, go figure. We're the we're basically Elwood City Limits is the episodic Binky podcast. So at this point, um, but yeah, it's it's really it's very funny at points. Uh, there's so many dynamics at play that I really think are genuinely hilarious like binky and the tough customers and biggie's uh bully relationship with everybody uh the performance by bruce dinsmore's binky of course always very stand out it's it really takes a uh a certain caliber of voice actor to be able to balance uh a character like that and i think i we i don't think we've never gotten any blowback on this but i just kind of want to say that like when we talk about long-term storytelling in a show like Arthur that is kind of meant to be more episodic it's funny how we can we are left in the cold with somebody like Muffy who's never really seemed to transcend her uh kind of sh- relatively shallow portrayal but in at the same token a character like Binky does feel a lot more evolved like there's a lot more layers there so i feel like it's if it's possible for him it's possible for every character and we've seen that in various kind of uh frequencies throughout these six seasons so i'm always always pleased that there is a little bit extra attention paid to binky because he really is one of the best characters on the show and this is another reason why loved loved this episode loved silence is golden uh great stuff yeah i completely agree all right, so we're getting ready to end off here, but of course, uh, we've got all our plugs out of the way. Uh, more, uh, so tell us where we can find you online with your music projects and on Twitter as well, and anywhere else you might want to plug. All right, you can find me on Twitter at severely online, uh, Maximilius Mood, whatever. Uh, yeah, follow me on there if you want to see some, you know, stupid <laughs> posts and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, frail hands. Uh, you can listen to us at frailhands.bandcamp.com. Uh, I think we have some records and shirts up for sale there. Uh, you can also find us uh, records and shirts for sale through 12 Gauge Records. Um, you can also listen to my other band, New Ruins, at newruinshfx.bandcamp.com. Uh, check out my noise project, Shepherds of Arcadia. Uh, I think that one's a shepherdsofarcadia.bandcamp.com. I play in a hardcore band, too, called Grief. You can check us out, grief902.bandcamp.com. Uh, again, I give a quick shout-out to uh, Pale Lake. 
Their yeah, homies. shout out to Pale Lake. Shout out to Pale Lake. Oh. Listen to listen to Pale Lake. They're sick. Uh, Pale Lake is out, so sick. They're so sick. Shout out Weird Star from Montreal. Shout out Gasm from Montreal. Uh, who else am I forgetting to listen? Uh, sh- shout out. Shout out Gossamer from Newfoundland. Uh, who else? Who else should I shout out? I don't know. There's too many ones we had I want to shout out. But yeah. Uh, severely online at Twitter. Frailhands.bandcamp.com. NewRuinsHFX.bandcamp.com. ShepherdsOfArcadia.bandcamp.com. Grief902.bandcamp.com. Those are my plugs. It's a good thing that I edit this show because that I I was like I was looking around for like a pen and paper or something, but I'll be able to copy this down uh, when I edit this pretty soon. Uh, More, it was great to have you on the show. Really appreciate your insight, yeah. and uh, you should you, Thank you. you should come back sometime. I would love to come back again. Absolutely. Well, we've got this was really fun. We've got like twenty more seasons of the show, so <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure we we we. Here's my promise to you: we might have you back before this or after this, but the one episode we have to have you on for is the one where uh, Bicky puts those headphones on and that meme, uh, oh my God. And, and is yes, like yes, listening yes, yes, to yes, the yes. song. Please, 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 <laughs> please get me on for that one. I would love. Hundred percent. We will find a way. Okay, so my name is uh, Will Young, and that's Lucas Mancini and our esteemed guest, Alex Moore. Check out all of their stuff. Uh, Next time on Elwood City Limits, uh, Lucas, you and I are going to be looking at The Boy Who Cried Comet and Arthur and Los Vecinos. Whoa. I with a de los mios personal. I, I don't know what this episode's about at all. All right. I, I wonder if it'll if it'll uh, if it'll jog your memory the next time we talk to you. All right. So for our guest Moore uh, and myself, Will Young, and for Lucas Mancini, toodle toodle around or on the putt putt or do you want to burn some rubber? <laughs> we'll see you next time. Have a great week, guys. <laughs>